the long-awaited Rust video. I know this one's been in the making for a while. Not really, it didn't take me that long to make it. Um, I had all the ideas in my head, I just never got around to making it, I guess. But I told people I would make it, following through on that promise right now, in the year 2023. Even though I promised it probably back in like October of 2022 or something. Anyways, that's not the point. Video is here now. So, I know my, i just like to say this first off, okay? I know my opinion on Rust might be controversial, might get a little bit of hate for it. Um, and just so you guys know, I do not delete comments. If your comment gets deleted, it's YouTube's auto filtering that does that. It is not me. I keep all comments on the channel, unless it's like spam, like those stupid like sex bot links. Anyways, I keep all the comments. So if you want to have some sort of like discussion with me, an argument or whatever, then we can talk in the comment section. Uh, if you have a sophisticated point to get across and you can like say it in a coherent fashion, I'm willing to have a conversation with you. You can also email me if you don't want to do it in the comments so your words aren't getting like censored. But yes, so let's just get into the video. It's already been a minute of me talking. So the first thing that I want to say about Rust, okay, the first reason I don't like it, bloat. Okay, now I'm a DWM user, I use a bunch of suckless software, I use a terminal for pretty much everything besides the browser, and I do not like bloat. I like the Unix philosophy, you know, do one thing, do it well. And it doesn't seem like much with Rust is doing that. So the cargo, um, I don't even know what to call it. I mean, see the thing is, if, if you ask me what is cargo, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Maybe a Rust user could tell you. But I wouldn't because it isn't really just one thing. Maybe it's a Rust tool chain, but it shouldn't all just be one thing then because it's doing multiple things and I'm not gonna lie, it's not doing any of them particularly well. But let's move on from that. Cargo, it's like I said, trying to be multiple things. So it's a package manager, some kind of like indexer, and then also a compiler and I have, honestly, I have no idea what its actual purpose is or should be, but that seems to, those three things are the things that I'm pretty sure it is. Of course, it shouldn't be so complicated that I have no idea what it is, that's just another downside of the program. But anyways, um, it doesn't really follow the Unix philosophy, like I said, do one thing, do it well, it's trying to do multiple things. You see, Dennis Ritchie, one of the creators of the C programming language, which obviously I have a very high fondness for, said Unix is simple. It just takes a genius to understand its simplicity. Well, the problem with Rust is that I think, well, maybe maybe this is just my opinion, but uh, Rust is probably for people of a little bit lower intelligence, I'd like to say, because with C you have to do like memory management and whatnot, but with Rust, all the people are always complain about how it's so memory safe and all this extra nonsense, which, I mean, nobody really cares about. Those are for the lower tier programmers. And I'm, I'm not trying to sound like an elitist, but there are obviously some languages that are easier, some languages that are harder. Python is a million times easier than Rust. If I see a Rust programmer, a Python programmer, I'm gonna tell the Rust programmer, obviously you're better at programming because you know a harder programming language. But C is harder than Rust, so you probably have to be a little bit smarter to actually like use and understand it. And I'll admit, I'm not the greatest at C, okay? I wrote an AUR helper in C, and that's about the extent of what I've done in it. But C is a good programming language. Anyways, enough about C, because this video is about Rust. Um, another thing that I like to say about Cargo, why I don't like it, is it doesn't follow the XDG directories, or really any directories at all. You see, when it comes to a binary, Think if you were using Pac-Man, for instance. Where is it going to install the main program? Well, you're thinking in your head right now, slash user, slash bin, right? And you'd be correct. Actually, one correction, it's USR. Somebody in the comments told me this months ago. USR stands for Universally Shared Resources. Now, I don't know if that's true, but somebody told me that. Anyways, it goes in slash USR slash bin slash whatever the binary's name is and it's perfect and you can just run it from there however with cargo if you are compiling a program in rust you know where it goes you guess dot local slash share slash cargo slash bin why why can't it go in slash user slash bin or slash user slash local slash bin no idea 
uh, if you try and move the binary to one of those places, well, it starts spewing out a bunch of errors, so I assume it has something to do with pathing, which it shouldn't be so complicated that you can't even move the binary. Speaking of binaries, the size of the binaries are huge. I mean, with a C program, if you're pushing one megabyte binary, that's pretty big, okay? But Rust's normal binaries are up there 9, 10 megabytes, which obviously with modern disks, it's not going to be that much. I mean, I have a 500 gig SSD installed on my ThinkPad. Now, do I really care about how big the binaries are? No, but I want to keep them as small as possible because it's a minimalist system. I don't, I don't need to worry about storage space, but being able to have a smaller system is great when I'm running things like maybe a Raspberry Pi where everything, every byte of space matters because you have barely any storage. So besides Cargo, I mentioned this earlier about the index, the crates.io index. Now what is the crates.io index? I think it is an index of all of the packages that Cargo, because it's package manager function, not the compiler part, I think it's all of the packages that it can pull from. However, the problem is that when I'm using Cargo, well, I'm not going to lie and say I have a fast connection. I have a pretty slow connection most of the time, maybe like 10 megabits per second down. Okay, and I'd say that's pretty slow, but maybe like 10-15 years ago, that was pretty fast. So. Let's, let's think about how that connection might come into play here. Well, on a normal package manager, it might be a little bit slow because you're downloading one or two tar balls, you know, the package, maybe a couple dependencies, okay? But with Cargo, you're downloading hundreds of dependencies, which might sound insane, but when you think about how dependencies work on a Unix-like system, it actually does make sense because with something like C, you have those .h files and they go in their... Um, in the include folder on your system. With Python, they have their own include thing. I'm not sure, I don't use Python. And with Rust, they have that, except the problem is that these are the type of people, just like the JavaScript people, that import a library for every single thing that they're trying to do, everything. And so I was trying to compile, what was the program? I don't remember what it's called, I think it's NSH, it was a shell, and it had something like 124 dependencies for a shell. Like, oh my god, that is, that is actually insane to me. Now, this might be normal for Rust programs, and I was like, well, you know what, I'm not going to judge Rust too much, maybe it's just this one program. And I started trying to install other programs, and they were the same way. The AUR helper written in Rust based off of the one written in Go. The one written in Go is called Yay, the one written in Rust is called Paru. And even that has like 80-something dependencies. Now tell me, what do you think happens when you have all these dependencies? Well, with a slow internet connection, like I mentioned earlier, 10 megabits per second down, you're going to take, well, the crates.io index, like I mentioned before, is huge, okay? And that alone takes 20, 30 minutes to just download the crates.io index. And then when you're grabbing 100 some dependencies for one program, you're looking at nearly an hour just to compile one Rust program just because of how slow everything is and how bloated everything is. But with C, you're downloading a few dependencies. It goes pretty quick because you have concurrent downloads and most of the things are very small as opposed to Rust where these libraries are just huge and the crates.io index is huge. Everything's huge, everything takes a long time to download. And I thought, wow, this is insane, because my AUR helper, written in C, I think it has like five, which is because I do everything either built in or with one library if I really, like, really need it. So aside from all the stuff with cargo and all the stuff with bloat, that's just my critiques of the actual programming language. And I guess maybe these are just up to personal preference, but I do not like the Rust quote unquote community because like online communities, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. I don't really like calling things communities, but that's kind of the best word to use. Anyways, they're always talking about using memory safe functions. However, you know, maybe sure they are using memory safe. The problem is that so many people end up wrapping half their code in the unsafe function, which gets rid of all of that. So you've negated like half the point of Rust at this point. And then they'll be like, okay, well, it's easier syntax. 
Well, yeah, it is easier syntax, so it's going to be a higher level language, so don't try to compare it to C, which has, I guess, well, you know, I like the C syntax. I think it's simple. A lot of people think it's, like, hard and complex. I don't, but it, C is a lower level language, so it's always going to have a quote-unquote harder syntax, but the rest people want the easy syntax and want the safe memory management when C, the whole, half the point is the memory management because you get it, like, as minimal as possible. And then, like um, I was saying with memory, Rust programs end up using more memory. I don't know why, if, if it's because it's like memory safe or whatever, it's giving, it's allocating more space like variables and whatnot. I have no idea. I don't know much about actually programming in Rust. I just know that I don't like it as an end user. Um, but maybe that's, that's the reason why, no idea. And another thing about programs, rewriting them, okay? Like I said earlier, with yay and paru, yay worked just fine, okay? Now, I don't like go, but I'm not going to get into that. I think go is arguably less bad than Rust. I don't, I don't really know how to say, else to say that besides less bad. I guess it's better, but I wouldn't want to say better because it's not good. But yay is better than Rust, but they both have their shortcomings, and I wouldn't want to use either of them. But the yay is, I don't know why I said yay is better than Rust, I meant go. Go is better than Rust, they both have their shortcomings. But I'd rather use go than Rust for literally anything. Anyways, I don't want to get too much onto that, but a lot of people, when they're writing things in Rust, instead of making their own programs, they will rewrite other programs and then say, oh, this is the best version of the program to use. Well, why? The last program was working just fine, unless you're like fixing bugs. But otherwise, there's really no point in doing that. But a lot of time, the new program written in Rust ends up running slower, having more lines of code, bigger binary size, and all the other things I said about things being bloated. So I have no incentive to actually run it. And like I said with the um, people being like, oh, this is the better version, Rust users are more elitist than I'm being right now, talking about how Rust users are, I mean, I guess I did kind of say that Rust users are dumber, but a lot of Rust users are really elitist for like no reason because like I said C is harder so they if they were programming in like assembly or something you know I think the elitism is valid because you gotta have a special level of well I'm not gonna say the word on YouTube but you gotta have a special level of you know what to be able to program an assembly efficiently and the last thing is codes of conduct. I hate codes of conduct. I shouldn't need to elaborate on this. If you want me to elaborate, you can go read my blog posts about it. I'll leave a link in the description, but I might make a video on it one day, but I feel like talking about it is just redundant because I've already written about it. So I'd, I'm rather just gonna leave a link in the description. You can read that, understand why I don't like codes of conduct. Anyways, that is the video about Rust. If you have any questions, or you have any arguments, or you agree with me, whatever, leave a comment. I'll make sure, well I'm not going to make sure to respond to every single one because I don't do that, but I'll respond to ones that intrigue me. Um, sometimes comments will get deleted, uh, I don't delete them, so you can email me if your comment gets deleted or something, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, see ya.